This game, man, I swear, this freaking game. I got the 10 pool from the level 52 units. I kind of wanted to try for Edda because I know Safia is still a little bit ways away. But apparently you can lose multiple 50-50s in a row before you get your legendary guaranteed, the banner rate up one. And then something like this happened. It was a bit early in the morning, I was not recording, sadly, probably should have. But yeah, that, that's a double legendary. Uh, Leonide, Leonide, not really sure how good he is. I think I've had some trouble against him in one of the stages. But man, Edda, from 1 to 52 in one fell swoop. As for the skills, uh, let's get up to rank 10 first, then we worry about the skills to unlock. I might have to use one of the Castella here already. Okay, rank 10, just 11 missing. What do we have here? Instant summon a box. This one should give someone high ground, not a bad pick some extra damage more attack defense ignore damage up magic defense up movement up dispels disruption this one i would likely want to get while at the same time the barrel casing douses everyone in liquor 150 speed slow basically makes your entire team move before the enemy team so this is an absolute must pick and i will likely use a castellia on the second one Decreases damage taken by 40% if there's an item within one tile around the character or counter-attack. Likely going to take shelter advantage depending on what basic attack she's gotten. Single target, 50% chance to decrease defense for two turns, this is nice. If there's any item within one tile, increases attack by 15%, allows the character to move again by two tiles after initiating an active attack. The extra attack and extra movement might be nice to help her reposition herself since she's a ranged unit. But at the same time, the physical defense down also enables her to join a physical damage based team rather than just a cast one with barrel. Uh, also, single target attack should counter follow up attacks too. 15% attack against enemies with shield or double dispel. I think we're going with the double dispel here. Going with the double dispel, she has the follow up attacks, so the counter attack is not necessary. We're going with the shelter advantage more survivability, especially for PvP. Lastly, all other allies within 4 tiles restore 1 energy. When she performs assisting attack, increases damage by 130. Increases the number of times the effect can be triggered up to 2 per turn, so we will likely want to take arms as well. Storm sniping, just some damage. I think we're going to treat her as a support, mostly. <laughs> Uh, for your weapon, I do think I might want to steal uh, Faisal's bow here, because damage with single target attacks should count her follow-up attacks as well. Uh, she's supposed to be a support, I think I might want something like a range damage reduction, maybe. As for gear, I think I might want another Curse of Fortune. These ones have been really, really nice. For now, what do you even do? <laughs> Before an attack or charge for each tile traverse, damage increases and he ignores defense. Okay, uh, decreases damage taken by 20% for one turn and enters cooldown for one turn. Oh, oh, even the cooldown. So he's a attack charge unit. Do I even want to waste mats on you? Well, I guess it's 52, we can bring him up to 52, it's only 270k. Uh, single target healing, if the target is unarmed, damage and magic defense. Or alert. I don't think this matters, I actually kind of hate both skills, uh, alert is very very low range on these melee units. Oh that's another one, charge stance and radiant guard, increases movement by 2 but restricts movement to a straight line. Ah this sucks, increases attack by 15% after moving, after attacking can move again and inherit the remaining movement, afterwards the skill switches to assault discharge. Assault Discharge we can't even see here. Otherwise, start of battle increases HP by 15%, the character is immune to negative effects of injured. That's actually not bad. It gets 20% less damage, 20% more damage taken, but only injured. The other passive ignores all of the health-related mechanics. 
uh, before attacking, if the character max HP is greater than the current target's HP, knocks the target back one tile. I don't know, I'm feeling Radiant God a little bit, mostly because the charge stance locks his movement into a single straight line, but at the same time he gains extra damage the more tiles he moves. And this one is an instant skill too, so you might just want to reposition yourself then use charge stance. And your pain, damage taken is decreased by 8%, when injured, damage taken is decreased by 20%, should be additionally 20%, but then again, it basically ignores the injured state, once again, and only the injured state. A reaction takes melee damage for all other allies within two tiles around the character and performs preamp dealing 70% damage. On a 3 turns cooldown? Like, why? Uh, even someone like Revia has it on a zero turn cooldown. What is this, dude? Uh, this is such a waste of materials. But then again, why is a legendary unit so weird? Uh, charges one enemy in a cross shaped range around the character, 30% damage and gains immunity to preempt. Yes, that's fine. Leader Aura for all discipline allies in battle increases attack and defense. For the skills with a cooldown no less than 4, this is cooldown by 1. Okay, this one might actually be nice. But I think mostly for himself, this is on a 3-turn cooldown too. Because which one was it? Uh, Charged Stance is on a 4-turn cooldown. So this one can actually go down to 3 with his own leader skill. That is basically it though. What did you do to the devs to make them hate you this much? I really don't know about this one. Like, most of the skills in here suck, I don't even know which ones to pick. Uh, I'm thinking maybe this discipline, but who are the discipline units? Okay, Edda, Him, Might, Candlelight and Divine Grace. I don't even have them leveled up. And Might wouldn't even benefit from his own faction, because he's from the Papal States. Yeah, Inanna and Miguel too. Yeah, no, I really don't know about this one. I think he might get something to tank. Uh, try and tank a little bit. Again, uh, two turn cooldown, not going to be reduced by his own thing. Charges at one enemy, cross shaped range around him, 60% damage before attacking, 30% HP to attack, not exceeding 20% of physical attack, knocks the target back to tiles when collision, stun. Okay, at least he has one decent skill. Now, if the character's max HP is greater than the target's current HP, but this one would be mostly for PvP, which I don't think I'm going to use him in PvP, or for some of the easier PvE stages in which I still don't think I'm going to use him. Because if you want to use this one for the uh, higher PvE stages, like the tower, this is never going to come into play. The enemies have way too much HP for this to come into play. I guess we're getting charged stance for now. But yeah, I can't really see myself using this unit. <laughs> One energy, six turns cooldown, charges at one enemy, 100% damage, before attacking dispels two debuffs from Leonide. Because HP equal to 100% attack, adds 35% of its HP to attack, but not exceeding 20% of attack. This one again, not so bad, and I guess this one is the skill you might want to get the leader skill for. Six turns cooldown. <laughs> you use this maybe once in a fight. Uh, yeah, looks like we went full charge three we will be going full charge 3, with maybe one exception. Yeah, for now let's go take Edda for a spin. Uh, Faisal, goodbye Faisal, welcome Edda. Everyone's back here, nice ranged units. I don't think Gloria is going to leave this spot, like, ever. Uh, tactics, should need movement, we should be fine with Pursuit Order, and probably a Divide Archer. The banner is nice and all, but it's really hard to use. Uh, of course we are under threat range from basically everything, but we just need to move forward a little bit. I uh, don't think the core strategy actually changes all that much. Uh, probably would if I were to get Inanna. But that is still a little bit far away or 30 bucks away. So what are the chances this is trapped? Uh, I think they might actually be pretty damn high. So she stops here for the AoE. Oh, she's actually pretty damn slow. She moves after the caster. Now uh, we can barrel, we can only barrel this side though. I think I need to move Gloria, or I need to keep Gloria uh, one tile behind. But yeah, that's our barrel, <laughs> and that's our damage tree. Uh, 
the, now we boost the speed to barrel, so she's the first one to act. Now, hold on, where's my little mage? 3.7 thousand attack, 30% damage plus leader plus flag. And enjoy the fireworks. The heads almost everyone basically wiped out. So you can stay here. And of course, there's the trap right there. Okay, that's attack number one. And that's attack number two. Uh, Ravia needs to take care of this one. The follow-up attacks dealing only 800 damage is not that impressive. But as a support unit, it's fine. Mostly I want to see if that thing also steals these spells. Okay, that, that's the first one. Oh god, no. That very bad experiences. Like, this thing has 270 speed. This thing moves first, slows down everyone. She follows at 270 and debuffs. And yeah, Stormbreaker can very likely charge and one-shot everyone. Maybe try something like this. So Samantha is the only one taking damage. But if people get slowed down, we are screwed. Uh, let's see if she can actually tank it. Because the only way to challenge this would be with my own units at 270 speed. Which are not exactly geared up. Because yeah, there's a triple flag down there too. Oh, starts with the Icy Blast. Okay, uh, she moves next. She moves as number four. And we cannot even push her. We need to heal and we need to heal quick. So you move next. Is this able to remove? I guess we can start bunching up a little bit. There's our Gloria gun. There's some damage reduction. As for you, I'd love to put you on a double movement just to try and push her down if we can. Uh, might have made her spawn a little bit too far. Uh, no, we are not going to reach, but maybe Rivia can just tank her. Okay, I was worried she would be dealing a lot more damage, honestly. So let's start casting. Uh, one barrel, this only slows down two units, but we should still be fine. And damage up. She heals so much, she should be able to 1v1 this guy. So all we need to do is kill these two. Kill this one. And this immunity cannot even be dispelled. So all we can do is wait. There we go. And full out until the end. Okay, this is pretty cool. Uh, everyone is just nice and bunched up. I think I still want them to run like this. Uh, she needs to cast right here. And she needs to put the barrel on top of all of them. Might actually want to push her first. So she slows everyone down too. Uh, no Edda on defense means I'm not going to be eating barrels. Okay, she could move up to here. But it's likely that we're going to find traps. They cannot deploy traps over here. So fortify... Uh, barrel just hit in the front line, it's fine as long as we hit them the lion. Slow everyone down. He okay, only hits the front line, only gets the tower. But she should not be hitting a trap up here. Oh god, this is so greedy. This is so insanely greedy, but I do want to do this. Please find a way to survive one round. 
Okay, he went on Mitha. Fantastic. And he just counters. Oh, this couldn't have gone any better. You can get another turn. And I guess we'll save the other uh, double attack for later. <laughs> That's a catastrophe. <laughs> okay, so as for you, uh, flag, that's another kill. Uh, honest, Dandelion was the biggest threat and he's gone, so we should be fine like this. Yeah, another shot and he just exploded. Uh, 314, let's get an archer back here and we should be about done. Okay, double sleep towers, which are again are going to be taken down by Beryl on turn 2. Uh, Inanna con Valeria, she's going to try and tank something. Uh, either that, or I've seen some of these units try and move down here when the main path is blocked. And if they do, I might actually want to keep Metha down in this area to push them down. Uh, burst shot, of course, we're going to completely ignore. Uh, this also takes care of two, well, should take care of all of the towers once I buffer. Uh, block I don't really care about, barrel I actually don't care about, so let's just buff. Oh, I guess that was the second turn on the burst shot. But yeah, let's give you another turn so she moves next and heal everyone back up. That's all the towers taken care of. And I think we can now just sit here for one turn. Wait for them to get out of position, because they should not be hitting their own defenses. Thank god it didn't pick Revia. Uh, next turn... Yeah, either barrel or I might actually have to heal at this point. And I might want to get out of this liquor pool as soon as possible because this one messes up the turn order. Oh! Oh, we can actually reach them. Yeah, you get a second attack turn. <laughs> A low barrel. Uh, she should die with this one. Uh, she's far away. Yeah, we're just going to use the second skill right here. But yeah, no, I think we are about done here. Three more days of enemies at the gate, uh, then we'll see if only the seasonal environment changes or if they're also going to change the entire stage. And okay, I guess that's going to be it for me for the moment. Somehow managed to get a new unit, really, really happy about it. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching, good luck with your roles, and see you guys around soon. Ciao!